All right, boys. So I've been, I've been, I've been literally spammed, spammed to make this video about the labyrinth. Now, I did it on global, right? So global dropped. I kind of mainly tested on JP, so I like I did everything there. I went and retested the entire thing so I can like learn the passives. Um, so I have a pretty good video for you. I'm on my free to play over here on uh, on global. I've made it to the boss two times and I've lost for stupid reasons. I'm telling you now. I hated that this game mode. I, I genuinely hate it that. Summer Merlin is such a cheat code because I tested it on Jazzy's account, right? And he has Summer Merlin and I consistently made it to the end with Summer Merlin. I hate this game, but for the reason that like she is just a cheat and I hate it. But today I tried my best to consider this all free to play, everything like that. There are some characters that you may need, but I'm hoping that you have them. So with that, and that's not Summer Merlin, calm down. Uh, but with that being it, let's jump into this. Let's have some fun. This is the Labyrinth um, Breakdown Guide, everything like that. Let's, let's have some fun. <laughs> So first, um, before I show you gameplay and do all that, I'm gonna teach you the route that I ran um, for floor one. So this is again, uh, floor one, right? It's super simple. This shouldn't really affect you and like you shouldn't be losing on this. Maybe to counter melee if you have bad RNG. Um, but for this floor, right, I'm gonna show you the route first and then like, show you some gameplay of how I did it. Um, you're gonna go right this way. I'm gonna open this up in paint actually. Can, can I color on this? Can I draw on this? Okay, where's the, is there a mark? No, there's not. So I opened this up in paint because it seems very intelligent to do this in paint. So I'll, uh, I can't zoom in, no, never mind. But so again, you start, this is how it works, right? First you go into one battle, very simple battle. You you get a character again on the main one. Um, my like top picks for this one was like green demon melee. Um, there's one like bond that you can use. I think it's like red bond or green bond. Um, but the one that I used like consistently is blue DN because she has a good passive that like it raises your stats every turn um, if you're alive. So there is that. There's also green the end, right? She is a kind of cheat code. Um, so that when you get to like the final boss over here, which is Melly, who has a counter, if you have a silver, you can, you know, cancel a stance, right? So that is really helpful. Um, so for the first one, it's not really a main pick. After floor one, you're gonna be getting rid of it super fast. Um, so again, really blue DN would be helpful, all of that. Um, but you know, you start here, you do the first battle, you're done there. You will then go over here to the star, right? You do the star. Get your thing awakened. You will then follow here. I can like make this maybe smaller. There we go, I got a thinner one. So again, you do this, you go to the star. You will then go pick a character here. This character is really, really helpful because it could be Red Gother. Red Gother will make this a cheat code if you don't have some Merlin because most of these stages can be just cheesed, I guess you can say, if you have attack disable, right? They can't do anything, they can't harm you. Um, again, you'll be dying constantly without it. Um, there's also Green Escorter for high damage and doing all of that. I'm um, applying debuffs and stuff like that. So again, it really, kind of comes down to RNG. People will get some Merlin here um, and nuke. Green Merlin is also very helpful um, for ult um, and then getting your ult faster. Um, for example, if you get a passive, right? A passive over like here-ish, um, you can get, which will say, uh, start your turn off with three orbs if you have the same race um, or different race or same attribute or all different attribute. That is a super insane passive, right? So you, if you get that plus Green Merlin, that's nuts. And also when I was recommending uh, Blue Deanne, I completely forgot. She also has a skill, right? So if it's ranked two, I think it's Rush Rock, that will actually then go and attack disable, right? So you have Gotha doing attack disable. And let's say at one point you have a, a second rank up um, for Gotha, you can you know rank up the entire deck of cards you have. If you rank that up and you get that, it will be an extra attack disable for you in case Gother doesn't have it that turn, right? So it will save you in a lot of things. And this actually saved me so many times. Um, so that is why I recommend Blue DN first. It's just, she's really helpful. Honestly speaking, she's really helpful. Um, and that's just my opinion. So keep that in mind. That is a, uh, a pickup also. You will then move on, get a character, uh, or get your characters leveled up basically. You'll then move over here. Um, it'll be just, you can only do the regular battle, which is again right here. After the regular battle, you will go get awakened. You will then take on a regular battle again. Then you'll pick a character. Again, this character really doesn't matter. Um, in either this one or in this one, you can pick up Jenna, right? Jenna is a good character for the reason she can also cancel stance and that could help you a lot in taking down um, the you know final boss over here, which is again, counter Meliodas. It helps out. Do you really need anything here? Not really, but you need it for CC because you have to go first against Meli or you are royally screwed. So there is that. After you pick up the character, again, you'll pick up a good passive over here right? You kind of need it. Again, the highly recommended passive is anything that increases your damage. Um, and again, remember, you have to realize that you have to keep reading your passives as you move along because you can run into a thing where it says like uh, increases your stats uh, by all demons. And if you have no demons on your team, what's the point of that passive? So again, pick something up um, that you know over the next two stages you will get characters for, right? Margaret, 
Merlin. Those are two characters you'll find in the end stage. Um, Escorner for human. Again, fully up to you, but that is a big recommendation um, to take into consideration. So again, go this way. You're literally just going to go up this path. Again, you do that. Um, you'll start off right here. You'll go here, pick a character. Again, you're doing it for CC. It doesn't really matter. You will then hit the shop by hero enhanced by awakening anything like that and then you'll make it to the final boss and that that's painful but other than this this is a really easy floor um you shouldn't really be dying if you have green uh, red gother constantly um attack disabling i will now show you some gameplay of what it looks like when you uh when you go against uh counter meliotis i don't know which one i have but i have a bunch of different gameplays uh, there's one like i lost one of the uh characters but i killed them right away again the first floor isn't the hardest one by any means it's super kind of straightforward once you understand like the character's past and like that um, and you kind of have like a thing going after you know a few times a few times running this um you will see that you will consistently clear floor one make it a floor two floor two is a nightmare um and i and i'll stand at this i don't care what anybody says floor two is harder than three because droll's boss is freaking annoying okay he can just nuke you like one shot um and it's, it's it's just annoying i hate that boss more than anything um i've had more success taking on melee than i have droll so if that is anything to take away from this i hate droll more than anything so um, again, you'll see it. I don't know how the gameplay is going to show it to you, uh, but you can take him out pretty easily. Um, and when you start the next turn, if a character dies, don't worry about it. You can pick up a revive. Again, it's between an ult increase or a revive. So let's say like you only lost one character and it doesn't really matter to you and you can move up um, and progress, you know, without dying any other characters. You can pick up the ult after this and it will help you a lot i mean i will show you what floor two looks like um as soon as i think the gameplay should be ending now i'll time it so like i can show you enough but again straightforward on floor one nothing really too hard on it so on a floor two here i hate this floor more than anything all right this is the worst floor for me um again this is where it just destroys everything like you can have such a great run going and on this one stupid stage with Droll, it'll ruin everything, right? Um, it happened to me a few times where I was like, you know, running. And again, remember, even if you have Summer Merlin here, this stage is still going to be a pain. It just depends on who you got, what character you got. Um, and it can make it or break it for you, right? So this floor is super annoying for that reason. I consider uninstalling after uh, going against that boss. But um, uh, for the route, right? So if you're wondering how to do it, where to go, I'll show that to you a little bit quicker because I want to do more gameplay on the stage. Uh, on this like floor because you, you kind of need it. Um, again, depending on what happened last time with Counter Meliodas, that is up to you on what you go for, right? You can go for the revive. You can. I recommend not to because you're going to get a character over here and you're basically going to get rid of it. So what you can do, right, is just fly up on this floor here. Correct. This floor isn't that hard. And I will turn this to like red so it's kind of easier to see. So again, this floor right here, great floor. Go for it. Get the level increase of your ultimate because you're going to need that in the end game. In the last stage, when it comes to Meliodas, higher ult gauge you have, better you can actually win. More CC you'll have because you have to out-CC him, right? To out-CC Meli, you need like 120k, which is pretty high up there, right? So again, you go here. You then go here. And again, it's fine. If you want to go here, it's, it's perfectly fine. Get the revive off. Get that done. Get the passive here. Hopefully, it's a good passive. Increase stats. That ultimate gauge one I mentioned. Anything like that is super, super helpful, um, and it will really make it or break it for you at the end of the game. Again, over here, pick a character. There is a choice, and you can reset if you need to. You can get Green Arthur. Green Arthur's the carry. Don't listen to anybody. Green Arthur's the carry. He will save you multiple times. 10 out of 10 unit. You need, you need Green Arthur. Got it? Get Green Arthur as soon as possible. Um, that is what I recommend. Got to do it. Get him. You're good to go. You then go over here to the shop. Get to the shop after the um, character pick. Level your characters, I'd recommend not to heal. If you need to heal, you do so, depending on who's like uh, destroying your health. Again, shop, whatever, awakening, level up, both work perfectly fine. Now again, when it does come to the shop, you don't have to awaken and um, level up. You don't have to do that, right? You can buy a character. And when you buy a character, you could get Summer Merlin, even if you don't have her, even if you don't like, own her on your account or anything like that, these shops can grant that to you. So if you want to try and see if you can get that, again, it will help you with the next floor also. It won't help you with the bosses, keep that in mind, but it will help you in the floors. So if that is in your favor, if that is in your luck, you got it, great job. That will literally cheese every other stage. That's a massive W, keep that in mind. You'll then go over here to the regular um, stage. You won't be taking on a boss this time. It's really not worth it. After the boss, you get to pick another character. Again, you could awaken your characters. I thoroughly recommend you pick a character. Now here, you can get Chandler. You can get um, a bunch of characters, actually. Somebody with a stance is kind of recommended. Um, there's like Droll, Derriere, the stuff like that. Um, but I think in the run that I'm going to show you in the open of this video, um, it was, I think I picked up Chandler. But I'm going to confirm that right now. Yeah, I picked up Chandler. So 
picked up Chandler. It made it a little bit easier to go and beat that final boss over here. And again, I also had a run, which I will show you. So I picked Chandler on one run, that went well. I picked, I picked Chandler um, on another run. So mainly Chandler was a good character. For some reason, I picked Droll. And I don't know how, but I was able to beat <laughs> with the, the other Droll nicely. I lost, I think, one character and I revived that character right away on the next uh, stage. But I'll show you that gameplay. Um, I killed him, perfectly fine. Again, the gimmick with him is super annoying. Now that's the reason you'll keep uh, like losing to him. But uh, I'll show you the entire gimmick. I'll break that down also. But that is the, just just to put it out there. So again, now I'm gonna show you the footage, and this is gonna be on my phone, so it might be uh, obviously cropped. But with this again, um, Droll, what he does, gimmick. Now with the gameplay, I'll show you. I button mashed, and I still killed him somehow. And I made it all the way until like the final boss on the melee stage. So remember, I recovered from two dead characters all the way, and I almost killed melee. Um, I completely messed up and just, I didn't crit, so life sucks. But um, on that same note, what am I saying? Uh, the gimmick, withdrawal, blue buff. Every time you attack him, he gets a blue buff, gets a blue buff, gets a blue buff, that keeps on going. Um, every time you attack him. Um, the main thing, if you have a counter unit, Chandler, um, Esterosa, those are gonna be very uh, really helpful. If you have that ultimate gauge passive, where it grants you three ultimate gauge at the start of the turn, that is the cheat code for this boss because you can just get you know two ults, hope he doesn't target those two characters, hope they survive the attacks. If they do survive the attacks, then you pay them back the favor and destroy them, right? Um, with Droll, it's like two attack on uh, single unit ults, he'll die. Um, if you have Green Arthur, he'll give you that passive boost. If no one dies, you'll have that 35%, 30%, whatever, um, and you will be able to kill him back. Again, attack disable does not work. Freeze does not work. Nothing really works on this character. Um, and he has heavy metal. You attack him too many times, he gets those buffs, he'll one-shot you. His ultimate is nuclear, so watch out there. Um, so much to keep in mind. Also, don't be like uh, me and use the counter, um, and then just the counter character dies, because then it will give him the buffs, it does nothing, and you know, he gets the ult next turn. Hope you have enough uh, attack power to kill him. Um, and again, I did make it through with this crappy team. So again, it will take you some time, and it will take you some RNG. Droll is the worst boss, so try your best not to rage, try your best not to uninstall. Um, but again, that's like the that's the best tips I can give you. Um, again, I'm sorry I don't have like the perfect gameplay for it, but button mashing got me through, and I was able to get forward onto stage three with button mashing. That's nuts. So onto the final floor. This is floor three. This is pain and suffering at its finest. Um, on this, yeah, most of the time, and I'm gonna be completely honest with you. After I think about like three or four times, five times being down here, um, like consistently. I never died on any of these except here. Really, this floor isn't too hard to deal with um, if you get characters. Um, so first thing, I'm gonna show you the route again. There's an ult thing here, very helpful if you can, but if your character died like mine, I did go this route, right? I did go and get the revive. Um, I needed it, okay, so it helped me. Um, I revived the end, it, I continued onwards and perfectly was fine. And at this pick, right? So at this um, part where you can like pick um, for a character, Margaret is an option, got it? Margaret is a literal clutch, a W character, carry you through everything. If you can get Margaret, that's beautiful. If you get Merlin, it's also there. Um, she also does really good if you can like, um, kind of solidify a team comp with that. Um, so just keep that in mind. Those two characters I highly recommend on this floor. They will really, really help you um, just through a lot and a lot of it. So again, fully up to you, do what you want, but um, it's either way, either one of these two are fine. So let's say you go either one, right? So let's just put circles here, I guess. It's like you went either one. You'll then go here, obviously get a passive, okay? You need it. The more passives you have, the better. And again, uh, the route that I gave you, you kind of have a little bit less passive than other people might have because they went a different route. So you need this passive, you need it, okay? If you can't beat it, you can't play it on, okay? You need this passive. If you wanna take it and risk it, you can go here and not get the passive if you already have something good. Fine, it's an easy boss, doesn't really have anything here. Get Margaret over here, you're fine, you're good to go. You can either go and get um, an awakening thing, or I would recommend you go and just buy one. Yeah, buy whatever you need. If it's a level enhancement, if it's an awakening, whatever you want, buy it from here, use the shop. Uh, if you need a character, you can buy a character. If there's someone that can help you, Trader Melee, there's, there's a bunch of characters in the shop area. Um, so if you would like to, you can definitely do that. Um, again, after that, you basically will fall exactly here. So there'll be like two battles, right? You can you see it? These are the two battles. So I'm exactly here um, because I, you know, use the shop icon. Um, so here, with this, you're gonna just take on this battle. You don't need to do a boss battle. Why do it? Because one of these boss battles has Cusack, and he will annihilate you. He'll destroy you. Freaking! Don't put yourself up to it. Okay? Whatever bosses I did, they were they were super easy to get through, um, and I really didn't have any problems. Next, another character can be picked up. This character is also a make it or break it. Um, in my game, I actually have no idea who was there. It was Escanor, it was Escanor, right? I had to pay for a refresh, I got Escanor. Remember, I think 
what happened was, and the reason I lost this run, um, was because I chose Escanor, right? But the passive that I chose cannot have um, Arthur and, what is it, Escanor on the same field because I'll lose the three ultimate gauge. So that is why I lost, so try your best not to, uh, you know, mess it up. But remember, if you can, and you can use Escanor, that is the literal clutch to beat Melee because of the um, ult, right? So getting ult and just nuking him is the best thing you can do. I couldn't get to ult. This is why I lost, um, but I was super close to doing it. Um, so there is that. Going up here, again, pick the character, do whatever you want. When you get over here, really, it, it kind of doesn't matter. Go right, I would say, okay? You will then go and pick character enhancement, okay? Go do that. You will then have to fight one more thing. Again, I'll show you all the fights in the uh, in the footage after I'm done showing you the path. Um, again, you'll land right here after this. Pick what you want. You want stars? You want ult? I say that both are good. It just depends on what you need. If you need CC, if you've already gotten whatever on the stars, you don't need it. You go for the ult. It depends. Got it? Either one is fine. After this, again, if you went this route, you can go pick up the star if you need it. Or you can just go in character enhance. Go character enhance. And you're done. You go in uh, def defeat melee. You go and fight melee. Um, but that's going to be a challenge. So I'll quickly walk you to the boss of melee. And I'll show you the gameplay that I got. So before I explain to you the, uh, the melee thing, I'm going to just try and like kind of put some gameplay on of what it looked like through the floors and what my team was. Um, in the end, I'm gonna quickly pull it up on my uh, on my uh, monitor here so I know what I'm talking about. Um, I think that I walked in to the final fight with Margaret, with Deanne on uh, on bench. Yes, I made it all the way with Deanne on there. Um, Green Arthur and Escanor. That was the team that I ran in the end, okay? And it, it pushed me to the end. I made it, I was about to win. I just, I got bad luck and uh, I couldn't kill uh, a melee. But other than that, I did pretty good up until then. Um, and again, I'll try and show you the boss here. Uh, but with this melee, he's just super annoying, right? He's basically kind of just, um, what is it? The Assault Meliodas passive, that's basically it. He still is your ultimate gauge. He, uh, like first turn will do, uh, he'll out CC you. You need 120k to out CC him. Unless you have that, he's going first and he's gonna wreck you. Um, his ultimate is basically a one shot, can't do anything there. He also um, has insane lifesteal, kind of. And again, I think there's no type advantage or disadvantage with him. He is purely RNG when you go against him. You need Escanor. If you have Margaret, she's gonna literally clutch it up for you. Um, you know, boost your stats, do all of that, and actually kind of help you. If you have Summer Merlin, she can't really do much in attack disabling him. Um, so there's nothing to look forward to there. You really, really need to out CC him if you want to go and win also to make it a little bit easier. Uh, but if you can't, can't do that. Um, he'll get his ult usually second turn right away. Um, he Again, a lot of the time when I was going against him, he got like a, a merge right away. Um, so I just got nuked. So with this, you have to try to get an ultimate. You do that, you can then go and kill him. That's basically it. Now we're getting the gameplay um, on this matchup. I don't know if it's the one that I won, um, but the one that I did win was on GP. And I'm gonna see if I can show that to you. Um, again, I kind of wanted to avoid showing you anything on GP because it's all Summer Merlin. Summer Merlin carried me, saved me, literally cradled me until the end. Like, I, I hate it that this mode was designed in the way it was, that she is that good. Like, you can get some consistent, consistent runs with her, um, attack disabling, and then if you get go through on top of it, you just even worse. Honestly, hate this mode for the reason. Um, when I first like played it, I was like, this is a good mode. This is a good mode. You later learn that, guess what? You can get some Merlin, and if you did, you're good to go. Yes, I understand that on floor two, you get it, but at a point, it's still RNG. You don't, you're not guaranteed to get her on floor two. Um, even if you don't own her, you're not guaranteed. So I went a few matches without her. Maybe I saw her like one or two times out of my 15 freaking runs. So, again, super stupid. So, again, free-to-play wise, you can beat this. I know you, I know you can. You can try it. Um, I did beat it um, on both Jazzy's account with Summer Merlin and my JP account with Summer Merlin. So far on Global, um, I'm going to put more time into it. I hate this mode so much that I didn't get to actually play it nicely on Global. I just wanted to make this guide. I'm going to show it to you. But, again, that's, like, the real tips. Um, in the footage, if I don't show you it, I kind of failed on this, uh, this run. Um, mainly because DN died. If she didn't die, I would have had enough CC probably to um, out CC him and continue onwards. Uh, but she did die. So absolutely stupid. Um, but that's mainly my run. Let me know. Again, I will show you later on when I do beat it on Global. I'm going to make a full playthrough. A full playthrough of it. Um, but that is just what I wanted to mention. And then again, you got to keep in mind also when you do kill him, right? When you do kill him and, you know, he's dead, whatever. He will come back with a revive, right? And that'll be like 20%. Um, of his health, so he'll be back. That means that that's why Escanor kind of, you know, does really good because he'll kill him and then kill him again um, with that, uh, was it death damage? So that does happen, yeah? Which means when you are doing it, you're gonna need to be able to like do enough damage to take him out the first time and then be able to, you know, finish him off with a 20%, right? Again, it's usually just one attack, but if you're using an AOE, anything like that, it won't really help you. Um, so the basic strategy, get an ult if that's Margaret, if that's Escanor, um, if that's, um, if Traitor Melee, if you get that, there's so many other characters you can try and use. 
Uh, but again, the success from it mainly for me was Escanor. That's who I kind of won with last time. Uh, Margaret Escanor and I think Green Arthur even made it too. So in this one, you, the footage you're seeing, um, similar way. But again, that's really it with this boss. It's super, super hard to deal with. Um, you have to try your best to kill him fast. And again, if you have that three ultimate gauge, um, you know, your passive, then it's helping you. That That's the biggest clutch of the day. Um, if that actually can last up into the end. Again, for the ones that exist that I know of, it's different races. Um, so, you know, Green Arthur ruined it for me. I had Deanna, which I swapped on the bench um, to see what happened. Um, she died, otherwise it would have been good. Um, so overall, the more runs you do, the more RNG, it's you're gonna need luck on your side to go and finish this. Um, and I'll update this guide as I learn more too. Um, and again, I want to show you like pure gameplay of me beating it. So I will record one full session. Um, and I won't do it on my phone and like separated, uh, just because BlueStacks was being annoying. It was like getting super stupid. Um, so I switched to my phone. I switched here and there. Some of that was at different times and I recorded everything. Um, and some of them were like different runs between each one. So again, I'll try my, uh, my best to make a super, super concise video, um, on it and like do a full run through with no cuts, no nothing, um, no route, no nothing. Just you seeing me fully beat it. Um, I will try that later on, but this is the, uh, the first upload of guide of like basic information, basic tips if I can give you. Um, hopefully I was able to help you. With that being said, again, best of luck. Hopefully you can beat it. Um, and again, next time I will show you that I beat it um, so that you have uh, you know, that to go with, a free to play beating it. You can do it, it's possible. Summer Merlin isn't required, but that's been it. Thank you for watching, peace out, enjoy. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have fun, stay safe. Um, and those are like the best tips I can give you for Labyrinth Mode.